We're back on US 101, California's Redwood Highway. For the last couple of episodes, I've really been harping on the highway's history. We've seen a lot of different abandoned things and historic photographs of attractions that mostly no longer exist. But today, I want to shift gears entirely and check out a couple of epic roadside attractions that are still very much here. Starting with a big one. The 200 foot world famous tree house. Would you look at the size of that beast? This giant redwood tree is believed to be between two and four thousand years old. It would be an amazing attraction even if there was nothing inside of it. Luckily for us though that is not the case. Hollowed out underneath and for some ways up the trunk by an ancient lightning strike. This tree was well known in the area as the Fraternal Monarch. Until in 1925, it and the surrounding property was purchased by a pioneering homesteading woman by the name of Minnie Stoddard Lily, a one-room schoolhouse teacher from the local area who was literally a homesteading pioneer here, having built a tiny cabin on a hundred or more acres. Living here all by herself in a cabin with only a pistol for protection. Minnie was quite a gal, quite a gal. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, in 1925, Minnie and her husband William decided to add to their property, purchasing the Fraternal Monarch. And in 1929, when the Redwood Highway was being constructed through their property, after letting some of the convict highway laborers use the bottom of the tree as a makeshift home, she thought, hey, there's an idea, and closed the tree and turned it into a gift shop. Over the years, the property became known as Lily Redwood Park. They added some cabins down there. And this whole building, which was once the Treehouse Cafe, serving up hot dogs and sandwiches. There were even a couple of gas pumps out front. But through it all, of course, the main attraction was the giant tree with the gift shop underneath that had once been the home of those highway workers and became world famous when it was featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not as the tallest house in the world. Apparently, Minnie owned and operated this place until her death in 1947. Pretty much solo since her husband had a job with a lumber company some distance away. Pretty amazing female entrepreneur story. Not only did she run this place and take care of all the visitors, she kept teaching school for over 30 years. Like I said, that was one heck of a gal. Anyway, the cabins may be closed to visitors now, and it's been a long, long time since the Treehouse Cafe served up any hot dogs, but the world famous tree house is still open. Unlike the old days where you entered the free gift shop through the front door of the tree here, you now enter around the back down these really cool steps where you go into the gift shop and pay your two dollar admission. But trust me, it's worth it. Okay, here it is, the entrance inside the gift shop. Oh my gosh, how cool looking is that? Weird. Oh my gosh, this was originally hollowed out by lightning. Three hundred years ago. And like the owner just told me, it's true. You can still smell charcoal. Wow, this is so cool. Here is the inside of the treehouse today, and here it is back in the 1930s. And looking closely, I just noticed they still have that same set of shelves. These have apparently been here since 1933. These were mini shelves. Oh yeah, that is awesome. They have a much bigger gift shop attached through the back now, so they don't need to cram as much merchandise inside the tree as they used to. But 86 years later, how cool is it that you can still pick up some swag inside the original Lily Redwood Park World Famous Tree House Gift Shop. Look at this, the lightning burned 50 feet of tree trunk out of the center here. Above that, this tree is still alive. That is really weird to think about. We are standing inside of a living creature. Ooh. I love these old hand-painted signs, especially this one, tallest one-room house in the world. There's a cool old taxidermy owl. There's this really cool old vintage postcard rack, apparently made of redwood burl also in 1933. Check out this amazing carved wooden wizard in here. The Wizard of Wood. Very impressive, but my favorite thing are all of these awesome vintage still working coin operated machines. Too bad I don't have any quarters. Oh wait. <laughs> 
Oh, check that out. I love little coin-operated dioramas like this. And made uniquely constructed little scenes. This is like my favorite stuff ever. Look how awesome that is. Look at all the little saws and gears. I could watch this forever, unfortunately. Time's up. Oh, look, there's another one. Here's the old blacksmith. This one's a little harder to see because a light doesn't pop on, but check that out. You can see the blacksmith back there working with his hammer. And what's this guy doing? Ah, shoeing up a horse. Here, let me shed a little phone flashlight action on that. Oh, there's another guy back there playing checkers with his friend. This says it was built in 1954 by Larry Sieber, who was only 14. Dang, I'm at least twice that old, and I have accomplished half as much. Look at that old fiddler there. He looks retired. That was awesome. Okay, I've got one more quarter. Gotta be for the merry-go-round. All right, here we go. Let's just make sure it's not a Canadian coin. All right. Nope. It was a good old-fashioned American one. Wow, look at this. Another hand-built Old school machine. Hear that music? Oh yes, I love everything about this. I've never had so much fun inside of a burned out living redwood tree. And it stopped. Wow. Well, I guess that's it. Party's over. Let's make sure before we leave though that we see it all. That is actually gonna be a lot harder than it sounds because this gift shop is ginormous. They've got a little bit of everything in here. They got redwood stuff, hillbilly night lights, everything from powder horns to bag piping gnomes. There's even a little back room in here with an assortment of antiques for sale, including the Super Soaker XP270. <laughs> that is a lot of firepower right there. Ooh, janky mermaid, build your own own outhouse. 1,000% buying that. Tree-themed cat furniture. Oh, I need that. And oh my gosh. If you like to vacation with a little romance, these uh, novels here are only one dollar each. Oh, no place to hide from these. Oh man, I think I'm going to stick with the build your own outhouse kit. Dude, how awesome was that? If you're headed this way, please make sure you stop at the world famous tree house. From what I understand, the owner's husband passed away only a few years ago. I could be wrong, but I believe this was his collection of international trucks parked out in front of here. Which is pretty awesome. Nothing like vintage automobiles at an old roadside attraction, huh? Anyway, the point is, this is the still small business that's very much worth supporting. And it's connected very closely with our next stop. Another roadside attraction around the bend. That's not only one of the most epic on earth and super famous in its own right, but has a very cool Disney connection as well. It's one of my all-time favorite places and possibly my favorite favorite roadside attraction ever. Built right here on another piece of mini Stoddard Lily's property. The one and only Confusion Hill. Ah! In 1949, a man by the name of George Hudson purchased this land to build his very own Gravity House roadside attraction. And for 70 years, Confusion Hill has been delighting, entertaining, and mystifying guests traveling on the old Redwood Highway. The highway used to run right here in front of Confusion Hill, but even though it's been relocated a few dozen yards away, this place is still going strong. One of the few surviving examples of old school post-war roadside attractions still operating in the same style and spirit that it always has. And not only is this place an epic piece of roadside Redwood Highway history, but for Disney fans, Confusion Hill is also the real life inspiration for much of the show Gravity Falls. Dude, one of the best modern animated Disney shows ever. Everything from the question mark logo to the yellow triangles everywhere to the totem pole in the parking lot will be familiar to Gravity Falls fans. And although the Gravity House and gift shop here at Confusion Hill look a little different than the mystery shack in the show, literally right across the highway, it's a building that's a dead ringer. The Redwoods River Resort building looks so much like the mystery shack, it's amazing. The golf carts out front, the multi-story A-frame building, there's even a little spot on the roof for Dipper and Wendy to sit. Dude, seriously combine this building with the stuff at Confusion Hill. And you've basically got a real life Gravity Falls. By season two, the show's creators were even admitting as much. And not only can you find a number of autographed items from Alex Hirsch and the cast on property, but inside the gift shop,
shop they have Grunkle Stan and Dipper's hats, a puzzle from their worldwide cipher hunt, and out in the parking lot, best of all, Bill Cipher himself. Spoiler alert, but at the end of the show, the main bad guy, Bill Cipher's body, now turned to stone, is shown just for a second, abandoned in the forest. The show's creator actually commissioned a real life version, hid it in a forest in Oregon, and leaving clues all over the world, literally started an international Da Vinci Code style scavenger hunt for this. And when it was all over, what better place to become Bill Cipher's permanent home than the real life inspiration for Gravity Falls Confusion Hill. If you've never seen the show, I highly recommend it. Pretty deep and dark for a kid's show. And I think like me, you'll quickly fall in love with Bill Cipher. Reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. Bye, gold. Bye. Now, speaking of stuff in the parking lot, one of the first attractions added to Confusion Hill after the Gravity House was this. The Redwood Shoe House. This is basically the oldest thing here. It was built in 1947 as a parade float in nearby Fort Bragg, California. And they added it to Confusion Hill has a sweet, fun pick opportunity. Cheese. Well, this doesn't seem to captivate many modern visitors. Back in the day, they sold like a zillion postcards of that thing. So it was very popular. Check this out. The totem pole is actually the largest freestanding redwood carved totem pole in the world. There are larger redwood carvings and larger totem poles, but those ones were carved while laying down and then put back up. This one was created in the 90s from a dead tree in the parking lot. It's 40 feet tall and is now featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Dude, we could spend a lot of time in this parking lot. I mean, it's practically pandemonium out here. But time is short and there's a lot of stuff to see. Dude, I love this old school gift shop. It's so cluttered and crazy and fantastic looking. Everything in here screams post-war tourist trap. And coming from me, that's a compliment. Now, there are actually two separate attractions here, but before we take a ride on the train, we've got to see the original Gravity House. Simply pay your admission and they give you the coolest hand stamp in the world and you're ready to go. Seriously, I'm in love with everything about this place. Just the hand-painted old school the look of everything is so awesome. Now, no doubt some of you have heard of Gravity Houses before. After all, there are many of them, like the Mystery Spot in Santa Cruz or the Oregon Vortex. It's no coincidence they're all built on hills and they all use optical illusions like this one here. Or because of the hill and the background, two people standing here when they switch places will appear to have grown or shrunk. It all takes advantage of the fact that our brains are used to straight lines. And unlike some of the other old school attractions that claim the mysterious power comes from a vortex or some weird energy, George Hudson was always pretty open about the fact that it was all a weird illusion. Thus his slogan, is seeing believing? Thus also the reason the gravity house is cool with cameras. Here they're not trying to pretend that it's mystical, just weird. And trust me, it is very, very weird indeed. Even before you get all the way inside, it becomes very difficult to tell which way is actually up. Oh, that is so weird looking from this perspective. I mean, the crazy slant of the hill, the crazy slant of the trees, the fences, and of course the shack all immediately start to mess with your mind. Confusion Hill indeed. Oh, dude, this is messed up right here. What in the world? Everything in here is completely topsy-turvy, upsy-daisy. Your brain wants the floor to be flat, but the floor's not flat. Floor not flat. It's a good thing there are a lot of poles to hold on to in here. Because it would be very easy to fall over. This place is so funky and weird and awesome looking. Normally, I hate these mystery shack type things because in most of them, you have to go with a guided tour. Usually, you just have a guide standing down here and all the tourists against one of the walls. But what I love about the Gravity House at Confusion Hill is that here, you get to do everything by yourself. Like watching this bottle roll uphill. How does that happen? Or here's a weird one. This chair here looks level. And actually, when you sit down in it, it feels level. But without using your hands or arms, it's almost impossible to stand up. Oh, Alright, I'm cheating. I'm cheating. Oh, this is so cool. You can hang on this bar. And gravity magically pulls your feet to the north. Oh, that is weird. It is so cool because people can just wander in and out of here at their leisure. And do all of the tricks themselves. Like watch a golf ball roll 
uphill. How in the world? You would think that these illusions would be less effective without a guide, but no. Somehow doing it all yourself makes it even weirder and more effective. Nobody's trying to lie to you or tell you the house is tilted this way or that way or explain it all in some kind of mystical way. I mean, you know the house is all kinds of crooked, but somehow the harder you try to figure everything out and the longer you're in here, the more disoriented you get. Oh, look at this. This is a good one. See this little trough here? It looks like it's going downhill. But if you pick up the golf ball and try to roll it downhill, something kind of surprising happens because the ball starts to roll back towards you uphill. Dude, there's a level on my camera. My camera was level this way. Somehow the weird angle you have to stand at combined with the weird angle of the walls and the weird angle of the hill up there just totally messes with your mind. It really appears as if that ball rolls back uphill towards you. All right, now that is a brain buster. Okay, this one is weird. Most of the weird stuff I can explain in here by just tilting my head this way. This thing is hanging straight down, you know? It looks like it's hanging at an angle, but really, this is the real up and down. The weird thing is, though, if you push it this way, it's really light. And if you pull it towards you, it feels much heavier. That one, I just cannot explain. I'm confused at Confusion Hill. Weird. Oh, man, it's been super fun watching groups come in and out of here and doing all of the weird things inside the Gravity House. But as fun as it is, once you're in there for 10 minutes or so, you really start to get motion sickness. I'm getting the full-on, like, funky headache and weird disoriented feeling. I gotta get out of here, but first, just one more trick. Because it wouldn't be a visit to a gravity house without a walk on the wall. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, I did it! I've defeated gravity! Whoa, well, ooh. well, almost. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The Confusion Hill gravity house. Completely crooked and strange. It's a straightforward mystery shack attraction, much like many others, but even better as you can roam around or fall down or test all the tricks in this one all by yourself. Yes! I love not having a guide. Well, it would be cool to have Grunkle Stan though, huh? Dude, all you hear all day from people going in there is how dizzy they feel. And I can't blame them because, whoa boy, am I with them now. My brain is so confused. Hey, just know this exit is the spot where that famous old Confusion Hill postcard picture was taken. Usually the man in that photograph is labeled as being George Hudson, the original owner and builder. So as you can see, in all these years, not much has changed. Dude, how sick is this place? It's got every sick, amazing roadside attraction trope I can think of. Humorous directional signs, a picnic area, things that spin, the giant rings of history display. Showing just how old some of these red wood trees can be. And this isn't even a big one. And there's even more stuff like the pet rock prison, a playground, a giant carved wooden finger, the twin towers, memorial trees, more things that spin, more things that rock. Oh yeah, there's a nice balance of attractions here. They even have their own mysterious animals. Created by Doug Campbell, the rare and elusive chipolo. Part chipmunk, part antelope, part lightning. You can buy stuffed ones in the gift shop. But if you don't want to get Rose or Chester chipolope in there, why not become a chipolope with this epic fun pick? <laughs> Look, Ma, I'm a chipolope. She's gonna be so proud. Dude, all of this stuff is so awesome. But what I love even more than the Gravity House and even more than all the hand-painted signs and strange coin-op machines is the other main attraction here, the thing we're gonna do next. The Mountain Train Ride. Well, it's just a simple little train ride through the Redwoods. After the previous owner's children sold off all the large redwood trees to loggers, the one and a quarter mile mountain train ride had to get a little more creative. And even though this little train has been running since 1955. What makes it even more special today is the driver, one of my favorite entertainers ever, Tony Take the Train Man. I should warn you guys that this is not your usual train ride. Boy. Oh boy! Not only is our driver very eccentric, but it also uses a weird Alpine switchback system. So there's a lot of very confusing stopping and starting again. There we go, now we're on the right track because that's the left track, right, left. 
You think that's bad? I ain't even started yet. It gets worse and worse. You way overpaid for this train ride. And when we go forward, we go backwards. But we don't go backward if we go forward. I don't know why, but I love going backwards on a train. And the whole train ride is about 30 minutes long, so I can't show you the whole thing. Plus, I wouldn't want to spoil it for you. But I will show you some of the highlights, beginning with a sample of some of the history lessons up here. Whilst on left, the steam donkey, this really is a mean piece of equipment. What they actually use this thing for, you take it up that mountain, you send this cable out, wrap it around the log, put the logs up the hill. The big question is, how you get this big old piece of equipment up the mountain in the late 1800s? This thing weighs 30 tons. The way they did it, there were 12 to 14 pair of oxen, giant cows to the front of it. Stuck logs underneath it, took the log from the back, moved it to the front, caterpillared up the hill. Three to five days to get up that little tiny hill. Till someone figured out they never needed the oxen. <laughs> Run the cable up, pull itself up the hill. Magic guy that figured that out 20 years. I'm just saying I'm a fat, short, lazy man. I would have figured that out 20 minutes. 20 years? Somebody ain't thinking. I'm just saying. Crazy. Right turn, Clyde. And then we move from history to the rest. I'm looking at my clock. It's well after five, so I better warn you. There's a slight possibility we could get stuck going through the smokestack tree. I don't know why, but at night, smokestack tree kind of swells up. Last train ride, I almost got stuck. I've been stuck before I get stuck. I stopped like that. Hold on. Here we go. Oh no! Oh man! Oh dang! Not that close, no. It is pretty close, but it ain't that close. The real reason why I stopped here, last year at the end of the year, I got this great big fake plastic spider, shoved it up inside there, told the kids on the next train, don't look up. They looked up. The boss, he lives over there, he comes running down from his house, find out what all the yelling, screaming, crying's all about. Needless to say, the boss said, no more spider. <laughs> so there ain't no spider up there today. <laughs> I already told you I was a male. What do we do? We lie. Yeah, there's a great big giant hairy spider up in there. By the way, his name is Harry. For obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there would be a great big giant hairy spider up in there. But if you notice, there's also a rope. That's because I got a new vampire I'm putting up there after work. Ooh. Well, that was awkward. We're gonna try that again. Uh, you go through a train tunnel, you're supposed to yell, scream, whistle, or holler. You don't make no noise? I don't go through that tunnel. I got nothing better to do. I just go back and forth and back and forth and back. Do I know how to go back and forth? Yeah. If that person next to you or that loving person in front of you ain't making no noise through the tunnel, bob them upside the head. Now the boss said with love. Lots and lots of love. And boy, my daddy, he used to love me. I'll never read National Geographic in my bedroom again. <laughs> okay, here we go. One more time. Here. That's a 1927 Buick Lafram fire truck. You may wonder why we have all those cartoon characters painted on that fire engine. It's actually a trippy story. I bought that from an old hippie commune. Wait, bought something else. Never mind, no, never mind. Forget I ever mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> This is so important, I'm gonna shut this thing down so I'm sure everybody can hear me. Off to our right inside this hollow log, that's Rocky the Raccoon. 
Rocky's been here a long time. He's been here 28 years that I know of. He's kind of old. He's kind of ornery, folks. He's got some bad habits. Just look at him. You can tell. See, one of his bad habits is if you do not wave at Rocky when we go by, Rocky will pee on you. You can wave, you can not wave, it's 100% up to you. I'm gonna back up. Give everybody a chance to wave. What's going on, Rocky? Of course, you really don't gotta wave with the odds of him being on you. They're probably better than you anticipated. Yeah, there ain't nothing better on God's green earth than a wet t shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes my day. I can reach everybody. Wavery fees. Yeah, I'll get everybody. Make my day. Oh yeah, my there gosh. You go. All right. All right. All right. Oh good job. Gosh. All right, you guys. Good job. All right. Okay, okay, there's a lot of stops on this train, but all jokes aside, there's also a lot of great scenery and information about the Redwoods, too. You'll see the original 1955 Confusion Hill train that was destroyed in a windstorm that took down all the little trees after the giants were logged. It's a great lesson about how these trees need to be preserved, and in fact, you'll also see how most of the giants have sprouted even more trees and how the new owners have seen the forest come back to life. I've been on a lot of theme park trains, but this is definitely the most unique and interesting train ride I've ever taken with one of the best guides ever. Now this is where I warn you guys to avoid our snack bar. The chili cheese fry. They look good. They smell good. They taste good. They will kill you. Okay. <laughs> you got 20 minutes before you explode. Okay. Sometimes 15. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're now headed back down the switchback system back down towards the parking lot. Now remember, I only showed you a little piece of the train ride. For one, because I don't want to spoil it if you come out here and get to ride the train yourself. But also, on my last of three train rides today, you might have noticed there was a film crew on board. Weird. Dude, trust me, this is the best train ride ever. Make sure when you leave to grab your free lousy postcard. And don't forget to leave a tip, because apparently Tony shares them with the ninjas in the parking lot. Ooh. Dude, I love this place. Like I mentioned, I rode that train three times today. And I never get sick of it. Dude, there's so much awesome stuff here, like chipmunks running around that you can actually feed. Little funny signs everywhere. Every single time I come here, I notice something new. Like the different colored chipolopes on the ground leading you to the various attractions. Speaking of chipolopes, that's the one thing I haven't seen out here. Lots of regular chipmunks running around. But no chipolopes. Well, except for the plush kind, that is. Hi, right, gang, as much as it pains me. Confusion Hill is closing up for the day. That's okay though, I promise you guys. This is a place we will return to. As a matter of fact, between you and me, this is the third time I've been here in a month. I just can't get enough of this place. Like I said, it's like the real life Gravity Falls mystery shack. Only even better, because not only is this place real, but it's got all that epic history to boot. And speaking of epic history, that reminds me. You remember Minnie Stoddard Lily? Well, right across the street from Confusion Hill. Back in the woods here, underneath the shade of her beloved giant redwood trees. Minnie loved the land she had pioneered and homesteaded so much that her final request was to be buried here. And in 1947, when she passed away, that's exactly what happened. And here she lies until this very day. It's interesting to think that this former school teacher's land is still a playground for all of us visitors. Anyway, make sure when you're in the neighborhood to stop by and pay your respects to a true pioneering woman who left quite a legacy, not only with all of her students in the area, but all the visitors to her giant tree house and, of course, Confusion Hill. By the way, for all of you Gravity Falls people, even though the cartoon is supposed Supposedly in Oregon, there's some other Northern California attractions that have also featured in the show, like the giant Paul Bunyan from Trees of Mystery, both kind of in the credits and later almost directly in one of the episodes of season two. And then literally just like five minutes from here, there's the famous One Log House, which was the inspiration for the diner in Gravity Falls. So a lot of stuff to see around here if you're a fan of the show. And like I said, if you haven't watched it, give it a whirl because it is pretty good. All right, friends, I think I've confused use you enough for one day. I really appreciate and want to thank each one of you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed our journey together to the real life inspiration for Gravity Falls, one of the greatest roadside attractions of all time. My favorite
favorite place to pull over in California. Confusion Hill. If you like this adventure and you want to support more of them, you can find all the information about how to do so down in the description. Along with social media links and links to other great episodes we've done. But for now, this adventure is over. We've done our duty. We can go home and get confused. Remember, reality is an illusion. You are so over by gold. Come on. <laughs> oh wait, that's a that's a nickel. <laughs> Blooper reel. And see little animated figures doing stuff? Oops. I love this sign. Look at this. No Canadian coins. Those darn Canadians always trying to pull a fast one on our hardworking American coin operated machine owners. Hey, chipmunks. Have you guys seen Alvin? Oh, gotta use a lot of fire safety in the forest. Ooh, we can find out what a fire bug looks like. Oh my gosh. I see the fire bug. Oh, he's ugly. Ooh. Oh my gosh. You guys don't think that the reason we haven't seen any live chipolopes is because of the snack bar, do you? I mean, they wouldn't serve us chipolopes in our hot dogs, would they? I want to say they wouldn't, but I'm just so confused. Hey guys, if like me, you could not get enough of Confusion Hill, search around on the internet and look for Huel Hauser, my hero's visit to this place. It is Awesome. He spends the whole day walking around with the former owner, Doug Campbell, who sadly recently passed away, and his wife, Carol. And let's just say he had one heck of a reaction to the uh, gravity house. Now, before I say this, let me just say this. The boss is the boss, and the boss is always wrong. Keeping that in mind, the boss has instructed me to say something like this. This is rumored to be the last known sighting of the rare and elusive Chippolo. I've never seen a Chippolo. You've never seen a Chippolo. Ain't nobody in this world ever seen a stupid Chippolo. But the boss sells Chippolo in the gift shop. He went as far as to name them. The ones with the red nose are Rose. The ones without the red nose are Chester. So if anybody asks if I mention the stupid Chippolo, I did. They're available in the gift shop for your enjoyment. I didn't tell you to buy them. They're a cross between a cantaloupe and a water buffalo. Don't buy them, no. 